I'm shooting this video exactly one week after the 2018 Marmot Alps. So in this video, I just wanted to talk about some of the things that I've learned through doing that event, some of the challenges that I had. So I just posted my ride uh, video for that event. So if you haven't seen it, watch it. It's This scenery is absolutely incredible. So in this video, I want to just go a little bit deeper into uh, some of the challenges uh, that I had for that event. First of all, I'll say that the Alps are even more beautiful than they are on TV. When I watch the tour and I see the Alps, my jaw just drops. Um, when you're out there in person and you're riding, uh, it's a whole nother level. Uh, so absolutely stunning. So <clears throat> the first thing that I'll talk about is the jet lag issue. Um, I did talk about it in the ride video, so I don't want to belabor it. Uh, but I want to bring it up because it's something that I knew, you know, I knew I was going to have to deal with. So we got there on a Friday morning. So our plane landed about 8 a.m. I uh, tried to sleep on the plane. The problem was two nights before that, um, I only got a couple hours of sleep because a fire alarm went off in the middle of the night. And then we tried to sleep on the plane the next night. And so by the time we got there, we were absolutely exhausted. Um, the first night in France, I actually slept really well. I woke up about 7 o'clock in the morning, France time, and I thought, hey, I can deal with this. Uh, I'm fine. Um, however, the next morning was not the case. I tried to go to bed early. It's probably about 11 o'clock France time. <clears throat> and then I had set my alarm for 5 o'clock. Didn't sleep that great that night. You know, the night before an event, you, know, you really don't sleep that well. So, you know, I woke up several times thinking about the event. Uh, just excited, a little intimidated. Uh, all those emotions and uh, that morning at five o'clock when the alarm went off I said I don't know if I can do this um, I was shaking uh, I was so tired uh, I'm one of those people I don't do well on lack of sleep uh, but I thought hey I'm just gonna push through it an hour or so um, I'll be fine I left the hotel about 6 a.m. went down Alpe d'Huez got to Bourg uh, about 6:25 and just hung out at the start line for half an hour or so. Got going and felt, eh, actually I didn't feel great uh, the whole ride. And like I said in the ride video, um, coming down the Glendon, so after about 27 miles, um, that's when I knew I had a problem. And so I, I, you know, again, I mentioned that in the ride video, I won't go too much more into it, but <clears throat> I learned that it, uh, if and when I do this uh, uh, event again, um, I will get to France about four to five days earlier. Uh, it's crucial. Um, I was not able to fully enjoy the ride. I, I love the experience, uh, don't regret it at all, uh, but I was nowhere near uh, the performance that I could have had if I was fully rested. Uh, so again, next time, I'm not going to take jet lag. Uh, I didn't take it lightly, um, but I didn't think, I've just never experienced it like that before. So I never, you know, was just absolutely falling asleep on the bicycle. Uh, at 8 o'clock in the morning. Um, I thought I would just kind of be tired in the morning when I woke up and then be okay. It was not the case. And so again, it's just something that uh, you got to take seriously uh, for an event like this. The other thing that I learned is I really should have taken gels. Um, I ate solid food. I tried to eat solid food the whole ride. And as I said in the ride video, um, I, well, I started getting nauseous probably three to four hours <laughs> into the event. And um, I got to where my stomach just would not take any food. And like I said in the, in the video, I, I got sick on Alpe d'Huez. When I was coming up Alpe d'Huez, so I, I took a lot of breaks. Again, I mentioned this in the other video. Um, probably two to three hours off the bike <coughs> for this event. Um, I had taken a, a several naps. I mentioned one of them in the, in the ride video. But I probably two or three times I pulled off and went to sleep. One of them was a good 10 to 15 minutes. That really helped. Um, I probably would not have finished the ride had I not done that. Um, so obviously my time was, was horrible if you look at my time, um, but <clears throat> the, the naps really helped. So back to the food. Uh, so I did not take any gels uh, because I did not use gels in my training. Um, but my longest training ride was six hours, even though it was in extreme heat. And by the way, for the Marmot Alps, I was fairly cool. In fact, I was cold on a couple of descents. Uh, coming up the Glibier, uh, where I took that long nap, um, I heard people talking about how hot it was, and I was like, dude, this is great. It was probably 60 to 65 degrees Fahrenheit, and um, that was perfect for me for a climb. Um, 
but some people were saying it was hot. Now, now OptiWes was pretty warm. Uh, it's fine for me, but I could see if you weren't used to it, it would have been really hot. So next time I would use gels uh, because of the, the nausea. I mean, I was really nauseous um, the last three hours of the event. Coming up OptiWes, when I pulled over, I just started hurling. <laughs> And I was like, I was probably only about 4K from the top. And I was like, I'm not going to be able to finish. Uh, and, but then I remembered why I, one of the reasons I was doing this ride uh, to raise money for um, my friend's uh, college fund, my friend who was hit by the car. Whoa! Dude, that was a big B. <laughs> so, so uh, you know, remembering why I was doing the ride, I thought of Sean Smith, uh, my friend who's no longer with us. And um, I said, I'm not gonna quit. And so, even though I was hurling on the side of Alpe d'Huez, uh, thinking about calling my wife to come pick me up, because again, our hotel was at the top of Alpe d'Huez, I said, nope, I'm not gonna quit. I'm gonna finish this ride. And I did, and I was so glad that I did. <clears throat> the other thing that I learned on this ride was you can push yourself further than you think you could push yourself. Um, I've never spent that long. So my ride time was nine hours and 40 minutes. That's how long I was on the bike. I was off the bike for another two to three hours. So I was out for, by the time I left the hotel to descend and then wait at the start line to the time I got to the top of Abduez was over 12 hours. And so I was out. Now I'm in the Alps, so <clears throat> it's beautiful. It was a gorgeous day. Uh, and so no complaints at all, uh, but I was out for a long time. Uh, but it's amazing what you can do when you set your mind to something. Let me put this ride in perspective. So I've done the Six Gap Century in Georgia uh, in five hours and 20 minutes. That's 100 miles, 12,000 feet of climbing, I think, 11 something. I've done the Three State, Three Mountain uh, Century in four hours and 30 minutes. I don't know how many, how many feet of climbing that one is. So to be on the bike nine hours and 40 minutes will tell you how difficult this ride is. Now, had I not been jet lagged, I probably could have cut my time down by an hour or two, um, really. I've never been on the bike that long, uh, but I was really amazed at what I could do <laughs> by setting my mind to something. So overall, this trip was absolutely mind-blowing. Uh, the ride was mind-blowing. Even though uh, the ride did not go as planned, uh, I finished and I am so glad that I did this. I met some great people, some great people with Look Cycles. That's a great company. Uh, the other three ambassadors, just really great to get to know them. Uh, each one of them have great stories. Uh, so it was an awesome trip. Again, my first time to France. So I'm gonna make another video, by the way, of w w things that I learned about traveling to France. So I, I went over there pretty green without doing a lot of research. I had to figure some things out on my own, um, which I'm gonna share in a separate video. I think you'll find those helpful. Uh, because uh, there, it's a lot different. Um, but overall, the trip was amazing. And it's also, it's gonna be really cool to sit and watch the tour in a few days and watch them do some of the roads that I did. So they're gonna be coming down the Col de Quatrefer, which is a climb we went up. Uh, it's part of the Col de Glen Glendon. And then they're gonna go up Alpe d'Huez. So watching them ride Alpe d'Huez faster than I rode Alpe d'Huez after 100 miles. Um, it's gonna be cool to watch. Um, also, they're going to go through a town. So my wife and I stayed an extra two nights um, after the event. We went to a town called Vizil. Uh, I would say Vizil, V-I-Z-I-L-L-E. -L -L -E. I think they pronounce it Vizil. Uh, the tour is going to go right through there. There's a huge castle. Our hotel was right across the street from this castle. Uh, the grounds at this castle were, again, everything I thought France would be and more. It was gorgeous. By the way, I've also learned the French are absolutely crazy about football, what we would call soccer. Uh, France won against Belgium uh, the night, uh, one of the nights we were there, and the town went absolutely crazy. Um, cars, people in the streets, fireworks going off for hours and hours. Um, and by the way, France just won the World Cup uh, as I'm shooting this video. They just won a few hours ago, so I cannot imagine how crazy that country is going now after winning the World Cup. Uh, so they, they love football over there. Uh, so anyway, that's gonna wrap it up for this video. Um, again, another one coming about traveling to France. You may wanna check that one out. Uh, a lot of things that I learned. So thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.